people leave coaches all the time in the sport, and obviously your guys' situation just like for some reason just blew up astronomically. Um, Chris, you can ask <laughs> a deeper question to. into that. I know it wasn't supposed to, but it happens all the time. Um, yeah. What were some of the things that you, as an individual, because I know that you're attached to, to Tin Man and whatnot, but like you as an individual, everyone has to sort of look out for themselves. What were you looking for that you thought you needed at the time? And what does your mom, Joan, what what led you to make that decision? I think a lot of times, and, and this is me peddling a little bit here, so these are my opinions. A lot of times in situations where an athlete leaves a coach, for whatever reason, the athlete's opinion or thoughts on the matter, like, are sort of just disregarded. It's like, oh, you should just be listening to the agents or other coaches in the sport or the sports marketing people or um, all these other people that are around the situation. But for a lot of times, the people that are in the situation, it's like, oh, the, the, it's something's wrong with them or whatever. And relationships yeah. are hard. Like, I'm not saying that it's anyone's fault or anything like that, but like, your decision was not respected, I would say, by almost, like, anybody outside of, like, the your peers, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, and what I was looking for was really simple. Um, someone who paid attention to me, gave me the time of day, and, like, cared about me as a person. Um, and I think, you know, like, that's all I was looking for. Like, I'm a pretty independent person. I don't need to be self-motivated. I'm not like, I don't need a coach that's like super rah-rah, like, all right, like, let's get pumped up for this race. That's it. That all comes from me. But I do need someone to like hold me accountable and also like just be there for the journey for all of it, the highs and the lows and not check in, you know, when I'm, you know, not be there to share the successes, but also just ride with me when I'm struggling. Um, and that was like, you know, I, I think when we started looking for a coach, it was, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't first think of, you know, my mom, I mean, she is in Virginia and, you know, she's has, you know, nine kids to raise, including me. And she, uh, you know, was coaching a high school team at the time. And, you know, my dad was working back there. And so, uh, but I just started to kind of slowly but surely get help from them. Like, hey, like, what do you think about this? Or, you know, like a lot of these relationships do. You just start to lean on someone else um, and start to like, you know, s like sift through all the problems that you're having and be like, let's talk this through. Like, what do you think about this? Or what do you what do, what do you think I'm doing wrong here? And And it just slowly kind of built up through that throughout, you know, the winter months when I was really, really struggling. And... Um, eventually I just decided like, I do need a change. I think sometimes a change, even if it's like, I think a change in it, in and of itself sometimes is what an athlete needs. Everyone does the same run training. And if they're telling you differently, like they're, they're lying to you. Everyone's doing tempo runs. Everyone's doing race pace stuff. Everyone does Hills. Everyone does speed work, yada, yada, yada. Like, but what is your relationship with that training and what's your relationship with the person assigning that? And I didn't have a good one with those two things. And so I needed some self-belief in my coach and, uh, and that was like the empowerment I was looking for. Um, and so then, you know, really it was kind of like getting the whole team on board after that of just kind of like talking through, like, what do we want? Because, most of the team was in the same boat where we knew we needed a change and we knew, you know, things weren't going well. And so, um, it really was kind of the thing, you know, where it's like, Oh, really? We're going to have Drew's mom coach us. Like I totally get the naysayers and the haters. Like, believe me, like I was ready to get blasted once this news hit. Like I probably would, you know, I probably would like be the person saying some funny jokes and making fun of that person as well. Like it's a, big it's a big time move and it's like a risky move for sure but at the same time like you know it's what I believed in and it's what the other guys on my team came around to believe in and you know it's been night and day different I think if you ask every guy on the team now like how things are going like practice is fun again 
um, we're a team again, we believe in each other, we want the best for each other. And so um, all of that stuff really kind of shows up on race day. And I just had nothing to pull from the last few years. Um, and, and now I do again. Yeah, because I feel like, uh, was it Joey on the Coffee Club podcast said that you were the first one to really kind of want to make that that change. So there really wasn't much of a hesitation when it was like bringing the rest of the team on board. Now I'm curious, like, what was that sort of conversation then like to sit down with your mom and yeah. was it an ask to be coached or was it like pitching her on the idea? How did that come about? Well, at first I was just like, can you coach me through the Olympic trials? And then can we figure this out? You know, that's how it started was like, I just need like, I mean, I already had like torn planner, things were not going well, but I was like, can you just like try, attempt to get me to the starting line <laughs> um, in June? And so that was basically how it started. It was like, okay. Like, and she was like, and I mean, I mean, she's my mom, you know, she just wants to help me. Like she saw how much her son was struggling and like, was like, okay, obviously I'm just going to like help him for a while. And, and we also talked, like, I think a lot of people don't realize is like, we looked at other coaches, you know, like I talked, you know, to other people and was really exploring. I mean, I even, you know, at some points when it was really, really bad, was like, should I move somewhere else? Like, you know, uh, like it was, you know, there was, I think like, you know, hiring my mom was a band-aid for me at the time and then it all of a sudden turned into like oh this is actually like what i want and this is what i deserve so mac did you have a spot for him out in san diego uh no i did just say if you needed anything out there though i did send you a message when all that shit was blowing up mac was very kind i really i i truly i really did appreciate that mac you have no idea like you know like those messages were the things that I was really freaking holding on to when it was rough, you know? Um, and I'm sure I'm like, I, it, at the time it meant a ton. It's, so thank yeah, you. I mean, that's, that's what, when you're going through that stuff, it feels like it's never happened to anybody else. And it feels yeah. like it's the <laughs> biggest thing in the world. And, and yeah. it is because yeah. it's your life. Like, and it's, it's mm-hmm. what means the most to you. And, there's contracts and there's relationships and stuff's always public. So everything's really stressful. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I've equally like, cause you know, I change groups too. And, um, yeah, you, I think you find really quickly, like a lot of your peers are actually some of the, or your competitors are actually probably the closest people to you. Like it, cause they sure. sort of get it. I don't know. I was just going to say, yeah, I think, um, almost, everyone who I really, really, uh, whose opinion I respected, got it. <laughs> um, and then it was, you know, 18 minute 5k runners online who thought I was the spawn of Satan. So, um, you know, it, it, uh, it, it's at the end of the day, when you kind of look at the people who want the best for you, like they understand. So yeah, completely absolutely. agree. Absolutely. <laughs> How'd you guys shut that, shut that out? I mean, cause it was, it was everywhere and like, mm-hmm. you know, it, it was, it was weird. Cause it, we, it, it felt like we were getting information trickling out this way and that way. And, and there wasn't like a full clear picture as to what happened, um, until, you know, kind of, there was a, a bit of a resolution. And so was it just like, all right, I'm off Instagram for the next month or so, or like. At, at that point, yeah. like you were, you were injured. So it's like, you're, you're spending more time on your phone than too. So it's like, it must've been tough to, to, to just totally cancel yeah. out all the fans. I was completely off social media for f- three or four months. Didn't look at a single thing. Um, that helped. I, uh, once I kind of decided, like, I remember I, I, right after my race in February, I got off social media and I remember the first time I actually went on and posted something was right before the Olympic trials when I wasn't going to run. Um, and, and, and I just got off. Um, I got like, when it, when everything first broke, I got so many, I wish I could show you guys some of the messages I got from people that have never met me in my life. It is brutal. Um, and I, and it was just like, it, it's hard. I think you so often want to be like, I don't care. Like, you know, those opinions don't matter, but like 
I'm a sensitive person. Like I genuinely want people to like me. Um, you know, I think I have to admit that to myself. Like, uh, like I think that was hard. It's like these people have never talked to me in their lives and they're formulating awful things about me based on a story that was completely misinterpreted, fabricated. Um, and yeah, and it wasn't supposed to go down this way. Um, when we left with coach Schwartz, like it was both of us were like, well, it was, it was supposed to be cordial. Like it was very much like, yeah, like after the Olympic trials, we'll announce and like, it'll be, you'll go your way. And he just straight up lied about that and just did not hold his end of the bargain. Um, and he just, he went to like news sources and told them the most ridiculous sob story you'll ever hear. Um, and at the end of the day, if you're not doing a good job at your job, I don't know why that's such a weird thing in this industry. Like, look at our team's results. They were terrible. You know, like, it's like, if you're not doing a good job, like why? I mean, how with NFL coaches, if you are a bad team for a few years, you are getting the can. Like that is just so normal. But for some reason in track and field, it's like, I don't know if it's because it's a tinier sport and everyone knows everyone. So you kind of have these like tight knit groups of people that you're like, you don't, you don't, you don't ruffle any feathers there. And that's what it felt like. Um, Mm -hmm. So, but really it's like, look at the results of our team. We had one guy at the Olympic trials, you know, like the year before 2019, our entire team was basically there, you know, that's a really bad year. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think the results speak for themselves. And so far, like, you know, we've had a lot of good results under my mom so far, and we hope to continue that. So what is the relationship like between like you and coach Schwartz now? Like, was there ever anything done afterwards to like try and, you know, mend or repair things? Cause like, I'm I, part yeah. of me is also thinking it's like uh, he was, you know, he's got his fingerprints behind some of the success you had in high school. And those are things that, you know, you'll never be able to, you know, let go of or forget. And for it to end this way kind of does tarnish things a little bit, but you don't want it to be that way forever. No, it's sad. Like, I mean, I don't have any resentment towards Tom anymore. Uh, Resentment does absolutely nothing to make anyone's lives better. Like you can have the worst thing happen to you and being resentful about it does not make that situation any worse. Um, I like, I, Oh, so much to Tom. And I would tell him this if I saw him, you know, um, I don't, I haven't spoken to him since it all went down. Um, but if I saw Tom around, like, uh, we wanted, we actually had a meeting set up to thank him and he didn't show up. Um, you know, we had like, and this is, you know, of course the media not hearing any of this. Um, you know, we had a, like, we tried working with him so much to like figure out how he could make more time for us. Like we really, really tried. Um, and, uh, I owe so much. I mean, I, you know, broke four minutes in the mile in high school. I ran under eight minutes in the three K like, and Tom was coaching me. Um, and like, I am the first to admit that and first to like, be so grateful for like the things I learned from him. Um, but at the same time, you know, like that's in the past now, and I want to accomplish even greater things going forward.